What is the recipe for how this 18,000 person town turns out such great hockey players? 1,800. 1,800, yeah. <laughs> how does a small town with less than 2,000 people become a hockey giant? I guess it makes sense that a city known for its windows would provide us with a clear view. Because if there's a secret sauce to how world Minnesota became Hockey Town USA, the recipe is hiding in plain sight. It's there in big block letters on the wall of the rink. You know this tagline in the rink that right when you walk in? Mm-hmm. Yeah, come early. It's come early. Stay, stay late. late. Stay every day. Stay every day. Every day. We could have all been as good as Warroad if we just had the recipe. But hockey in Hockey Town is bigger than a slogan. It's about goals. OT, center pass, shot, score! Warroad, the perfect season! And gold. Oh, again. Score! Team USA wins! Brothers and brothers from another mother. Headbands. Henry Bustay. And heroes. G. G. Marvin will salt this one away. It's all here in Warroad, Minnesota. Hockey Town, USA. Warroad, Minnesota is a small town that's had a mighty impact on the game, consistently turning out NHL All-Stars, Olympians, NCAA, and PWHL stars. So to all the crazy hockey parents out there trying to keep up with the Joneses, Warroad is here to remind us the best way to find an edge is on your edges. I'm gonna ask you, okay, you're a small town, but you're a hockey giant. You make tons of good players. Why? Because we skate a lot. Well, I don't know if it's really a secret, but um, we skate a lot. Because we played a lot? <laughs> yeah, because we played a lot. <laughs> do you even go to school? How, do you, how, do you, how much do you skate? A lot. Like, yeah. Almost every day of the week. I think it would be the slogan, come early, stay late, skate every day with our free ice that we have here, which is a big thing. That's it, you just skate a lot. <laughs> Skate a lot, play a lot. Can it really be that simple? Not exactly. To give every kid a key to the rink, even in a small town, takes leadership and a different way of thinking. Warroad turned the model on its head. We really promote what I call a reverse pyramid. And I don't think a lot of people know this, but the people that skate the most in our town are entry level, are mites. They'll get five to six ice times a week. We think, again, the most fundamental thing about hockey is skating, so who should skate the most? Your, your entry-level people. It's amazing, actually, it's so obvious. The key to hockey is being able to skate, and world has been very good that way. When you kind of have a passion throughout your whole town, like hockey, everybody spends a lot of time at the rink. We kind of were just destined to, to put out all these good players. A reverse pyramid and a giant open sign hanging out front of every rink, all the time. And here in Warroad, when they say open hockey, they mean it. Since you're a little kid, you can just skate whenever you want? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. How much did you skate? Probably f three hours on average, probably a day. Really? Yeah. That's outstanding. Rink's always open. Always open? Yep. So uh, you could skate at like midnight? if you really wanted to. You just gotta make sure the maintenance room's unlocked. That's the one thing. Being a small town has its advantages too. Warroad allows its players to skate with teams one level up or down from their own team, allowing every player to double down on their ice time. This is Hockey Town, so it shouldn't be a surprise that everyone is invited. For as long as I can remember, and I've been around for a while, they promote the fact that you can skate as much as you want, if you want to. So not only is there lots of open hockey, hundreds of hours 
yearly. It's always been on an open hockey ice. You could have high school players and you could have six-year-olds and they always just figure out how to make it work on that same sheet. So that's that's one thing. Also, if, when your ice time is kind of given to you by the association, then there's nobody keeping score, right? If a, if a squirt comes and skates with the peewee king, that's okay, right? Because the peewees aren't getting shorted anything. I love that. It's like a pilot getting extra hours it in a plane or yeah. something. Inspired by Team USA's 1998 women's gold medal in Nagano, World Girls Hockey was an easy decision from the start. World has built a championship caliber girls program that's been around for 25 years, one of the oldest and strongest in the state. The only sport girls had in town was basketball. And you know, they play five at a time and could play the whole game conceivably. So after uh, the US women won gold in Nagano yep, in 98. 98, said, you know, this girls hockey thing is gonna blow up and go. I said, let's, we should jump on board and do it. And uh, we did. Girls hockey continues to thrive today in War Road with players like Gigi Marvin giving back every chance they get. Who do you guys look up to, War Road hockey players? Do you have like an older? My aunt Gigi. She was the first one that like taught me how to um, skate. Oh yeah, she has summer camp too. Mm, she's nice and she does a Gigi's camp in the summer. Gigi has definitely been an influence on that. She's always coming home, skating with us. She never hesitates to get involved with our program and like still give back. Every single person I've talked to, every girl says Gigi. She's like the queen of War Road Hockey. Yeah. yeah. Mention War Road Hockey and you'll probably hear about the legend himself, Mr. Henry Boucher. When Henry and his team made it to the state tournament, not only with how good he was, but the, how good the team was, they all talked about this tiny little town and it just, it really brought credibility to the world high school hockey program. You know, you got some pretty good flow. Any ever think about rocking the Henry Boucher headband? Yeah, we have to wear a bucket and warm up so so. Just a yeah. symbolic lap. I mean, that's just legendary. Someone's got to do that. that. That's just me asking. You know, I met Henry when I first moved up here and it's one of those guys that he could have somebody in a corner telling a story and then Henry would walk in and everybody will go to him. <laughs> People gravitate to him and he's got, he had such a, a big personality and he was a kind man. While it remains to be seen if the headband will return, it's a fact that Boucher helped put the World High School program on the map. What does Hockey Day Minnesota mean? I mean, there's gonna be 10,000 people coming to town. What do you think it means to the community to, to be celebrated like that? Oh, I think it's just fantastic. I've had people ask me, why would, how would World, a small town like that, get such a big event? And I said, that, that that's hockey up there. This season, Hockey Day Minnesota comes to Hockey Town, a chance for World to show the state of hockey that its unique culture and community are bigger than just words. It's religion. So I'm at the Can-Am Inn and the Wi-Fi password is War Road 1. So every single team that rolls into town, you make them type War Road 1 into the Wi-Fi. Is this something you guys are involved with? I mean, one of our teammates' mom owns the place, so maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I know the, the volunteers and everybody involved has put a ton of work into it. It's just gonna showcase War Road and, and say, geez, it, it is hockey town. Hockey Day Minnesota will be capped off with the rivalry. Warroad Rozo. There's nothing quite like it. What would you say about the Warroad Rozo rivalry? It's the greatest thing in the world. Your best friends are either from Rozo or Warroad. But when you're playing against each other, it's it's competition. Today it's more of a sibling rivalry as the team 20 miles down the road shares a mutual respect for how they approach the game. I mean, we're all friends, not during the hockey season, so we don't really want to try and hurt each other too much. I think it brings out the best in both communities, producing hockey players and uh, providing great hockey games. It's, it's so much fun every single time. They come here, we go there. It's always a great atmosphere. We're looking forward to this next game because we actually lost them last time, and we are due for some redemption now.
on Saturday when that game happens, are you guys going to be like all together? And what's that going to be like? It's going to be really fun. Yeah. We're going to be cheering really loud. Who's going to win Saturday? If I knew that, I'd be investing in the stock market. Here in Hockey Town, puck is stronger than just about anything, even pandemics. Look no further than the Riverbend Skate Path created in 2020 when three neighbors decided to connect their rinks at a time when the entire world was keeping its distance. Rinks were closed, which was tough for people here. And, um, and one day a young gal had asked her dad if he could plow a path from their rink to her friend's rink down the river. And he did that. And then it went further and further and turned into a huge path that um, is several miles long and, and really people come from all over to do now. Did you do it? Yeah. Yeah. We did it yesterday at school. You, you could just call someone up and either go out at docks at a brewery. Just go out there and you skate, see all the houses, see all the scenery and everything. I live on the river, so I just go off my dock. So I would want to bring some food, like a bag lunch or something, but nobody does that around the world, huh? Yeah. Maybe I'm just hungrier. From the ground it began. The tradition here is just fantastic. You know, we we just grew up being hockey players. When I first went on an Olympic team in 1948, we kind of had a hold on hockey in Minnesota. At that time, I think there were two artificial ice rinks in the Twin Cities, and now there's probably one in every corner almost, yeah. but we're trying to hold our own up here by making ice available to everybody. Yep, that's Hockey Town USA, a place where kids would rather skate than scroll. A community where your neighbor is a few scrapes of the shovel away. A town where the rink is always open. Yes, if you want to be a hockey player, War Road is a great place to be. Well, that's a wrap on season one of the association. Special thanks to the good people in Edina, Grand Rapids, White Bear, and Wool Road who helped us pull this off. But don't worry, we're just getting started. If your association has a unique story and embraces Minnesota's community-based hockey model, reach out for a chance to be featured in upcoming episodes. We'd love to come visit. We'll see you season two.